Crestview Exploration announces results from the 2022 geological mapping at the Rock Creek Gold Prospect in Elko County, Nevada, Calgary, Canada December 13, 2022. Crestview Exploration Inc. Trading on the CSE under the symbol CRS and on the Frankfurt Exchange under the symbol CE7 is pleased to announce the results from the 2022 mapping campaign at the Rock Creek Gold Prospect in Tuscarora Mountains of Elko County, Nevada. These results include the completion of the geology map and overlays, detailed descriptions of structures and mapped units, and alteration in mineralization observations and interpretations. A digitized and simplified version of the geology map is on our website. The mapping project accomplished several key goals, including a base map of surface features to guide drill targeting and better understand geophysical results by identifying and delineating the mineralized and unmineralized surface lithologies, modeling the strength and distribution of alteration features, an updated and more accurate model of veins and structures controlling surface mineralization. The mapping project was completed at the 1 to 2000 scale, producing five folios with three geological overlays geology alteration, and Fe oxides that were used to generate the south, central, west, north and north end interpretive folios. Scans of the original which are hand-drawn interpretive folios and field progress reports will be available on the company website at www.crestviewexploration.com. As a reminder to the reader, the Rock Creek property consists of 74 unpatented load mining claims, but is in close proximity to as near as currently possible Crestview's Divide and Falcon properties, which comprise an additional 186 claims, for a total of approximately 2,009 hectares, or 4,965 acres between the three. Small historical prospecting occurred at all three properties, and more extensive historic mining occurred at Falcon and Divide. At Rock Creek, there was also some historic drilling which confirmed anomalous precious metal values. However, none of these holes penetrated deeper than 500 feet. Unpublished report by Krusen and Limbach, 1985. The property is located within the Eocene Big Cottonwood Canyon caldera in the Tuscarora Volcanic Field, hosting low sulfidation epithermal quartz veins with precious metal mineralization. The Big Cottonwood Canyon caldera complex consists of multiple episodes of rhyolitic ash flow tuff, and lava flows of andesitic to desitic composition. The mapping at Rock Creek concurs with the geological views of Henry and Bowden from 1998 on the general evolution of the Big Cottonwood Canyon caldera. Please visit our website to view the map images included in this news release. Mapped Rock Units On the accompanying maps, the ash flow tuff of Big Cottonwood Canyon is broken into an lower and upper unit called TCT1 and TCT2, which are separated by a thin andesitic lava flow TA. The lower ash flow tuff unit TCT1 is the main host for quartz veins at the property. The unit is a weakly to moderately lithic, densely to moderately welded ash flow tuff with abundant fine. In altered samples, plagioclase and biotite are generally removed resulting in pitted textures. Lithic fragments are small lesser than 5 cm angular pieces of paleozoic quartzite, siltstone. Near the structures, it's hydrothermally altered to quartz plus ceric a light and thin envelopes producing linear color anomalies white to gray bleaching. Silicified and brexia ledges are found in several locations. Overlying this unit is an unaltered to propolitic altar, dark to light greenish porphyritic plagioclase andesite lava flow TA. These andesites range from hornblende to plagioclase dominant, with low content in biotite lesser than 1%. This rock unit hosts two prospects sampled during mapping. In both localities, late comb veins and gray quartz stockworks veinlets abound. At the north end of the property, andesitic autobrexials are somewhat common within the andesite lava flows. Outcropping in topographic highs in the central portion of the property, an upper ash flow rhyolitic tuff unit with 5-7% to coarse lithic fragments TCT2 overlies the andesite. This may be an indication of near vent face and a small nested caldera within the larger caldera. Sparse and small northeast trending quartz veins cut the TCT2 tuff. Field observations suggest that the dacite lava flows TD along the southern and central borders of the Rock Creek property overlie the lithic rich ash flow tufts of TCT1. The dacite is medium grain with clear plagioclase fenacris 15%, scarce quartz lesser than 1%, hornbull, and biotite 2%. The unit is weakly altered propolitic and oxidized, and the lava flows form smooth outcrops with typical reddish purple colors in areas of low, rolling topography. The desitic domes and flows TD are hypothesized to have been emplaced after the eruption of the TCT2 ash flow tufts and the collapse of the caldera. In the southern portion of Rock Creek, a suspected desitic lava dome underlays the TCT1 ash flow tufts. 
The last eruptive episode or episodes is represented by a small eruption or eruptions of rhyolitic lava or lavas from several plugs TR, which may have occurred between 35 and 33 mA based on nearby radiometric dating re. R. R. Henry and Bowden, 1998. The rhyolite is light, tan, pinkish colored with a strong flow banding foliation. The TR unit is weakly altered to propolitic sea assemblage re. Hudson, 2003. The oldest and deepest unit mapped at Rock Creek is the Paleozoic Metasedimentary Sequence, which is comprised of intensely fractured and folded quartzite, quartzorenite, metasiltstone, and chert. The Paleozoic Metasedimentary unit was mapped in small, structurally controlled outcrops in the southern portion of the property. The Paleozoic Metasedimentary rocks feature abundant Fe oxides along fractures and quartz veins with late quartz vein stockworks. Structures, alteration and QTZ veins. The faults and quartz veins delineate major structural trends of mineralization and alteration at Rock Creek. The quartz veins occur in several structural systems that dominate the entire Rock Creek property. In the field, these structures can be traced for a few to a few hundred meters, with greater strike lengths interpreted from aerial imagery. Most of the structures, veins have well-developed slick insides with apparent normal and oblique slips. The width of the vein systems is variable, up to 140 meters. The structural trends are northeast, with a minor north-northeast component, north-south and northwest trending with moderate to high dips. In general, northeast trending faults are the younger structures, cutting north-south and northwest trending structures. The oblique slip movements of the primary north-northeast component system may have caused the development of north-south and north-northwest dilational, extensional fractures, veins between the primary fractures. Tia dikes may be aligned to the northeast, trending fractures in the central folio. Lastly, there is a discrete east-west fracture fabric that cuts all the former structures. The fractured controlled alteration envelopes at Rock Creek are small, decreasing outward from the hanging wall section of the main structures. In general, textures are preserved within the alteration envelopes. Three main alteration types have been identified within the mapping area, including silicification, quart plus sericite, the light plus minus pyrite or quartz sericite pyrite, and propolitization. Mineralized quartz veins are primarily hosted in the lower ash flow tough unit TCT1 at Rock Creek. Quartz veins exhibit multiple phases of growth and emplacement in faults, with frequent post-mineral brexiation affecting both the host rocks and veins. The veins have a sharp boundary with the host rock, with variable widths ranging from centimeter scale up to 10 meters. The quartz vein textures observed include crustiform, cockade, comb, and massive. Lattice quartz textures were observed in a few localities indicating shallow boiling and probable precious metals deposition. Late, cross-cutting stockwork quartz veinlets are a common feature in most veins. Quantitative data from fluid inclusions from quartz veins in the Tuscarora Mining District re. Castor et al. 2003. Henry et al. 1998 suggests shallow depths of vein formation of 200 to 400 meters, which agrees with the textures and alteration patterns observed during field mapping. The original pyrite content, is estimated between 1 to 3 percent. Late phi oxides jerosite and hematite and euhedral barite fill cavity and late fractures. Field mapping, aerial photo lineaments, and magnetic anomalies suggest a nested caldera within the older Big Cottonwood Canyon caldera. The nested caldera is an oval structure having a diameter of about 3 kilometers. Within the property, Plagioclase andesitic flows Tia and the lithic rich ash flow tuff unit TCT2 were emplaced along the western margins of the caldera. Aeromagnetic data shows three magnetic highs toward the west margin of the nested caldera. These magnetic highs may be the result of stacked plagioclase andesite flows and the presence of andesitic intrusions at depth. A small siliceous, unmineralized center was mapped at the north end of the property, near the intersection zone of a northeast and north, striking structures. Conclusions The mapping at the Rock Creek property has revealed the presence of low-grade but laterally extensive precious metals mineralization controlled by north-northwest, north-south, and north-northeast, trending, high-to-low angles faults and fractures. The mineralization is primarily hosted in the Intracaldera TCT1 ash flow tuff. The interpretation that caldera ring fracture zones and simoid loops had a major control on mineralization opens an additional area for further exploration in the nested caldera within the property. A follow-up hyperspectral imaginary survey is recommended at Rock Creek to delineate alterations in nation of clays and carbonates and the orientation of potential or bearing structures. References include Castor S. et al. 2003. The Tuscarora Gold Silver District, Eocene Volcanic Hosted Epithermal Deposits in the Carlin Gold Region, Nevada, Economic Geology, Volume 98. 
339-366. Krusen, M. and F. Limbach, 1985. Progress Report Cow Creek Prospect Elko County, Nevada. Unpublished Report. Henry, C. et al. 1998. Geology and Mineralization of the Eocene Tuscarora Volcanic Field, Elko County, Nevada, U.S. Geological Survey Open Files Report 98-338. Henry, C. et al. 1998. Geology of the Mount Blitzen Quadrangle, Nevada Bureau of Mines, Map 110. Hudson, D. 2003, Epithermal Alteration and Mineralization in the Comstock District, Nevada. Economic Geology Volume 98, pages 367 to 385. Marma, J. and Vance, R. 2010, Importance of Simoid Loops and Implications for Exploration and Development of Epithermal Gold-Silver Veins in the Gold Circle District. Midas, Nevada, Great Basin Evolution and Metallogeny, 2010 Symposium, pages 777 to 793. This news release was prepared by J. Alo, Master of Science Geology, and J. Ruiz, Master of Science Geology and has been approved by Alan Morris, Master of Science, CPG No. 10550. Alan J. Morris is a qualified person as defined by NI 43101 and has reviewed the scientific and technical disclosure included in this news release. On behalf of the Board of Directors, Chris Wensley, Chief Executive Officer, about Crestview Exploration Inc. Crestview Exploration is an experienced exploration company focused on the exploration and development of its portfolio of gold and silver properties located in prolific mining districts of Nevada. The Rock Creek Gold Project is Crestview's flagship asset, with 74 unpatented load mining claims wholly owned and controlled by Crestview Exploration. The Rock Creek property was acquired in 2017, and the company went public in 2019. Emboldened by the results coming out of Rock Creek, Crestview strategically expanded on the land position with the acquisition of the nearby Divide Mine Prospect in April 2020 and the acquisition of the Falcon Silver Gold Prospect in September 2022. Between the three properties, all targeting similar mineralization and likely the same hydrothermal system, Crestview now holds 260 total claims in close proximity of one another. These three gold prospects, along with the nearby Castile Prospect, are situated in a region with proven world-class gold deposits including Meat, Jared Canyon, Betsy Post, Makel, and Gold Quarry, where the potential of finding large, high-grade gold-silver deposits is favorable. The Cimarron Project is located in the San Antonio Mountains of Nye County, Nevada, and is comprised of 31 unpatented load mining claims, including control of six historically producing claims associated with the historic San Antonio mine. The property is located in the prolific Walker Lane trend, approximately 44 kilometers south of the world-class Round Mountain deposit. For further information please contact Chris Wensley, Chief Executive Officer. Telephone, 778-887-3900. Email, chris at crestviewexploration.com. Forward-looking information. This news release includes certain information that may be deemed forward-looking information under applicable securities laws. All statements in this release, other than statements of historical facts that address acquisition of the property and future work thereon, mineral resource and reserve potential, exploration activity, and events or developments that the company expects is forward-looking information. Although the company believes the expectations expressed in such statements are based on reasonable assumptions, such statements are not guarantees of future performance and actual results or developments may differ materially from those in the statement. There are certain factors that could cause actual results to differ materially from those in the forward-looking information. These include the results of the company's due diligence investigations, market prices, exploration successes, continued availability of capital financing, and general economic, market or business conditions, and those additionally described in the company's filings with the Canadian Securities Authorities. Investors are cautioned that any such statements are not guarantees of future performance and actual results or developments may differ materially from those projected in the forward-looking information. For more information on the company, investors are encouraged to review the company's public filings at www.cedar.com. The company disclaims any intention or obligation to update or revise any forward-looking information, whether as a result of new information, future events or otherwise, other than as required by law. Neither the Canadian Securities Exchange nor its regulation services provider has reviewed or accept responsibility for the adequacy or accuracy of this release.